fresh when the mother cries. Move the center floor to the floor. Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. I try to do something a little different, uh, share some of my uh, pens uh, with uh, you, the viewers. So this is a, a set I put together uh, just to take a look at um, an iconic American pen manufacturer, Parker. Those uh, familiar with looking at pens and uh, watching videos and shopping for pens, these are dual folds. There are three newer versions, and um, we're going to look at the original. Well, not the original original. It's a little bit of a second or third generation one, but a big red from uh, probably the late 20s, early 30s. What I've always liked about dual folds is a classic design. So let's start with the vintage one. I mean, it's just a great color. The black finial here unscrews so you can easily replace the clip if you need to. Nice dual bands at the bottom of the cap. Sometimes they're single, sometimes they're triple. Pen came in various sizes. Uh, this is the larger size, at least to the best of my recollection. And then like a black uh, cover here at the bottom of the barrel, but that is where the filler mechanism is. So it was a push button filler. I haven't done a lot to clean this pen up. I just did a little bit of cleaning. Uh, it had a working bladder in it. I probably put that bladder in maybe a while ago when I got the pen. Let's see if we can pick up um, the engraving, which is kind of faint, but we should be able to see it if we catch it right. It basically just says George Parker, dual fold, made in USA. So that's kind of what it is like. So now let's compare it to a newer one. And this is not really that new. This was probably made in 1990. Uh, dual Fold reinvented themselves, or Parker reinvented the Dual Fold, reintroduced it in the late 18, 1980s. Oof, different uh, century there. And as you can see, it's very similar. The color actually matches pretty well. Got a nice uh, diffuse uh, cloudy light coming in, sunlight coming in. It has two bands, but one is bigger than the other. Um, the same type of black at the bottom and the top. What's nice uh, when they made these pens is they put a really nice emblem in them. This pen came in also many versions. I think this is the Mark I as far as I can tell. Uh, I bought it in 93 in Bloomingdale's, uh, the uh, department store in New York City. Yes, back in those days, they actually sold fountain pens in department stores. So um, the pen came in this uh, really nice wood box. And if you open it up, you see there's a place for two, because a lot of times they sold these as pairs. An interesting uh, kind of engraving uh, Parker lifetime guarantee. The pen came with an interesting booklet. So again, this was kind of like the, I think, the rejuvenation of fountain pens. Um, so um, when I bought the pen, I got the uh, opportunity to join the Platinum Club from Parker. And they just did, I think, just as a nice job of, of explaining Parker uh, the full lifetime warranty. You could also do complementary monogramming, which was uh, very common with the vintage pens. They also had a fountain pen nib exchange, which is unique. You had complementary cleaning and service checks. I mean, this was like buying a Lexus, you know, of, of, of the pens. There was also some accessories. Uh, I do have a ballpoint when we get to the blue pen. They had a toll-free line for customer support. Again, a very uh, not typical, but then this was not an inexpensive pen. And of course we have, you can enroll, you send your little uh, registration to them, which I didn't do. Uh, what's also nice is here's the monogramming that you can order. 
you know, send a pen to them, get it monogrammed. And what I find amazing is this is the amount of nibs that you get to choose from. I mean, this is an excellent selection of nibs here. Uh, your regulars in everything from needlepoint to extra, extra broad, obliques, reverse obliques, oblique italics, reverse oblique italics, and just italic nibs. So uh, that's very impressive that Parker actually, you know, went that extra effort. And of course, there's another way of the registration. So I'm just impressed with that. Um, let's take a look at another one. This is also probably a Mark I or it could be a Mark II. The uh, clip is slightly smaller on this one. The other thing, if we get a close-up here, you'll notice this thin band here is actually raised and here it's flat. And it's also true about the bands at the end. These are all heavily plated with uh, 23 karat gold, so they seem to hold up well. I think this is a, this is a PMMA acrylic. Uh, it, it really has a lot of depth to it. It's a beautiful blue. It's one of the common colors. It came in red and green. There was a lapis lazuli. They did, there was an ivory one. They did a lot of variations of this pen. And I, I wasn't collecting sets, so this is the... Uh, Ballpoint, again, beautifully done, matches uh, the fountain pen very, very well. So I have inked up the two red ones, so we will take a look at their writing, but I thought I would just use this one as my, as my demonstration. So it's an unscrew cap. Uh, the section is very nicely sized. Uh, nice two gold bands here at the bottom, which is kind of unique for Parker. And the nib is just absolutely beautiful. It's a two-tone nib with uh, the rhodium as the kind of like the feather. Um, you know, really, again, top of the line, very well done. If you turn the pen over, you see it's a classic feed, but classic Parker feed. As we look at the uh, big red, the uh, vintage one, you also see a similar type of plain feed without fins on it. And this is a medium nib. It's a cartridge converter. Very solidly made. I mean, this feed system is excellent. It's on here. And it's a classic uh, Parker converter. The other thing was, is I was seeing how the nib and feed assembly works. So these are just friction fit. So um, it was easy to pull out. There we go. So, um, you know, this is the nib. I mean, it's a good size nib, as you can see. And the feed is also, I think, quite unique. It's a plastic feed, probably injection molded. The fins are really in the back part of the feed. Probably a lot of channels in there. As you can see, uh, here's like the breather where probably the ink is drawn up through uh, the little hole here at the bottom of, of the section. Again, it's, it's a really well-made pen. Uh, I like all the brass uh, parts to it. Uh, we're going to do some... Um, dimensions and the, the the nib and feed are very easy to reassemble they, they slide right into place and it's really um, keeps it well aligned so it was I mean excellent design excellent engineering uh, the red one was made in the UK and from what I've read I think most of these were made in the UK so that was on the pen so let's take a look at some weights. I think that'll be interesting, especially comparing it to vintage. So first we'll do the vintage pen. It's in at 24 grams, which is probably a little bit on the heavy side. Vintage pens were generally fairly light. Cap is 8.4, so the majority of the weight is, is in the barrel, which is what you would expect from the size of the barrel. As we go to the modern one, it's uh, 31, a little bit over 31 grams, which is a little heavier. It feels more substantial also. It really feels like a solid pen. And the cap is, again, uh, light, much lighter than, than the barrel section. If we take a look at some measurements, the overall length of the new pen is a little bit over five and a quarter inches, or 136, a little over 136 millimeters. 
that's a decent sized pen weight and everything else it, I, it's not oversized certainly but it's certainly in that realm as you can see the vintage as you probably notice is slightly bigger but not significant and in, in, in the way it's weighted and balanced and everything uh, both pens uh, work very well and also we wanted to do a little comparison I think it's interesting from your perspective because you don't get a chance to actually feel the pen how it looks uh, in relationship to some of the newer pens you might be familiar with is your uh, Lamy Safari a little bit longer but certainly uh, not as girthy you know your Twisby 580 again they're all in a similar size range yeah there's an M800 which is probably a similar sized pen it's slightly longer and then we'll just uh, compare it to uh, a Newler's Ahab which is also considered a large pen but the Parker Centennial Dual Fold holds its own. Sup writing as I mentioned I have the same uh, Ito Shizuku ink in both of the orange uh, Parker Dual Folds. We're starting with the vintage uh, Big Red Parker used a dual fold name for a lot of pens. Uh, most of them are button fill that they did. Uh, this is a nice fine point, a little bit soft, and I would say a little bit rough. Uh, I haven't really looked at this or tuned this nib in any way. So I'm not certain. Uh, you know, I think this would easily be turned into a very smooth nib. And this is a fine writer. I mean, that's really a nice fine line that you can get down there. So we'll compare the two nibs. I think that'd be an interesting look at. Okay, the uh, vintage uh, is holds its own, probably a little bit longer. Who knows what's buried inside that feed, but I think if you took them out like we did on the blue one, you would see that that nib is much longer in the newer Parker. The design on the new Parker nib is also quite nice with the two-tone. If you take a look at the feed, there are a lot of similarities because the feed is smooth. No combs, no fins. You can catch a little bit of that arrow on the side there, uh, the design of the vintage feeds on uh, Parker dual folds. So let's put the uh, modern pen to paper. And you can see immediately this is a much wetter nib. And that's almost, I'd say, on the broad side. And a little bit of pressure, it opens up uh, better than the vintage opened up. But this is a uh, wet writer. One, two, three, four, five. That's a lot of ink there. And it's a pinkish red, as we see from the smearing it across. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this little review of some Parker pens. Uh, these uh, newer models are still being made. They make uh, different ones. They make different uh, colors. They make changes to them. I mean, that's, uh, you know, something that's nice if this is a pen that you are interested in. So thank you for watching. And may all your writing experiences be pleasurable. And may you have many. Bye.